What's going on, everybody? Special guest here. It's Greg Biggins, National Recruiting Analyst for 24-7 Sports. We're going to talk about Jaden Rashada at the Elite 11, how he looked, you know, what he did well, uh, things like that. But Greg, what's going on? Dude, I can't stop smiling because your T-shirt, first off. I, I just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see a lot, a whole lot of angel gear out here in Southern California. So to see someone on the other side of the coast rocking that red makes me feel really good inside. And uh, it's tough right now. I'm, it's tough being an Angels fan, but I, I like what you're doing over there for me. Yeah, I had to make my guests feel comfortable. I had to switch, full disclosure, uh, rocking the wrong West Coast team. So I had to switch it up. I've been to an Angels game um, years ago, uh, always kind of paying attention. But I love baseball. I love sports. So um, had to do that. Yeah, and I got the 17 on the back. So so we're good there. there uh, go. Jaden Rashada, a lot of excitement. Um, Greg, just maybe overall takeaways, how we looked at Elite 11. You, you know, not necessarily before as a player, yeah. but just these – this week, how, how did he do? What what did your big takeaways from him? Big takeaway was he, he looked like he was still kind of just not himself, right? And, and he even admitted that. We talked for a while after the camp. I, I feel, you know, this whole thing has been super stressful. And I don't think as a, as a fan or even, you know, when we do our job, we don't realize the stress these kids go through. And especially him, his recruitment was wild. So, uh, you know, just never looked like he was throwing, you know, just free and easy. Because for me, I mean, he's got top five arm talent for sure. And when he's at his best, he would have been right there with – with Dante and Jackson Arnold and, and those guys. Um, but it like press a little bit. I thought he was a little bit tight. Um, you know, inconsistent would probably be another word. You know, his best throws were some of the best throws, but sometimes, uh, you know, he'd, he'd throw one that was an absolute, you know, 18 yard comeback dart on a line and the next ball would he, you know, he'd bounce it or sell it. So just finding that consistency, like it never really got into a rhythm. And, and again, this isn't me being critical. We talked afterwards and he freely admitted I enjoyed being out here. It was fun being with the kids. But from a football standpoint, man, he goes, I wasn't myself. It was disappointing. Um, you know, he did make excuses. Said, hey, I knew Nike football. I never thrown it before. I never really got to get to grip it and rip it before the camp started. So that was a little bit of an issue. But he, I just think mentally he wants to go get away from football for a bit, maybe just clear his head. And he, and he has an opportunity now. They're in a dead period right now for Pittsburgh High School. Uh, so, you know, from a standpoint of just performance, I, I would give him – you know, a B minus maybe. And he, you saw he still made our top 11. That kind of shows you, hey, it wasn't his best performance and he still made our 11. Uh, but I think, again, his, his his A performance, he's a top five guy for me in this class still. And I think that's what's difficult. And just from a different perspective, kind of watching guys, I always try not to, you know, just only evaluate a small sample size. And I'm sure, like you said, you feel like he's still one of those top quarterbacks in the country, top five. Uh, let's, let's talk about maybe some of the things he went through, um, at the event, you know, some events, um, some participation, there's a lot that goes into an elite 11 camp. Um, can you, can you speak on that? You know, what, what did you do uh, on particular drills in particular that stood out? Yeah, no. So the first day was kind of like if anyone has ever been to a, a Nike camp, right? That was, you know, old squeeze doom at university of Miami. In, in my old student sports day. So that was basically what an elite 11 regional is now. You kind of just, uh, you know, there's, you know, probably throw for about two hours straight. And it's kind of like, you know, all the different routes you have your, your, a lot of them were short intermediate things, a lot of just working on footwork, working on balance. Um, probably the deepest balls were maybe like a, maybe like a 20 yard skinny post. I'm just kind of estimating on the, on the yards, but um, it, it was, like I said, a, a two hour workout where I thought he, you know, he was solid again, not super consistent for him. And I think maybe my issue and I, I I've seen him so much that I, I maybe I have like, you mentioned like a recency bias for people seeing a guy for the first time. For me, maybe it's it's a bias of knowing how good he can be. So I'm kind of measuring up to that. Um, but I, I think people who saw him for the first time also maybe saw some inconsistency there. So that was the first day. The second day was was a pro day. And um, again, that was, you know, you're, you're throwing, I, I didn't count, I'd say probably 18 to 20 balls. And it's kind of simulating, and, you know, you watch these pro days that these college quarterbacks do. And again, it's every route, you're short, you're intimate, you're, you're out, you're digs your deep skinny post with a couple of deep balls. There's a drop back and a deep ball. There's, you know, a play action. There's rolling out to your right, rolling out to your left. Um, you know, got to throw some touch passes. Guys hold on a bag. Got, it's like over a linebacker, under a safety, stuff like that. So it's, they do a nice job in terms of the camp, kind of simulating just about everything you would see in an actual football game. So I guess 18 to 20 throws. And then the last day was your seven on seven, where they're working with receivers that they're not super familiar with, but you have, it's a 15 minute clock. 
and you can score as many touchdowns as you can, right? So it, it's not like it's you get three and out, and another team comes in. Um, each quarterback, you get 15 minutes, and then when that 15 minutes is done, you're done for the day, and then another quarterback comes in working with different receivers and, and DBs. So, uh, again, I, I would say every day you, you saw flashes of, of what he can do and what he can be, and then, you you know, maybe you saw him, you know, under throw a ball, um, maybe not just processing as quickly as you'd like to see him, you know, maybe taking a sack or something like that. So that was kind of like the three days. And then obviously I'm probably being a little too long winded between these workouts. There's a ton of, you know, chalk talks. They have a bunch of speakers that talk to them about being leaders about, you know, just the dangers, right. Sexual harassment and what you can and can't do and being careful. Um, just sports psychologists come in and talk to the kids about, you know, going through mental health issues and seeking help, you know, if you go through that. So, like I said, I mean, it's not just football. It's it's kind of try to mold these guys into, into leaders and, and good people off the field so they can be, you know, great leaders on the field. So that's kind of the, the, the event as a whole. First off, not long winded. I know personally, I'm enjoying listening to you explain everything. I'm sure the, the viewers and the listeners are as well, uh, because you're there, you know, you're painting the picture. And, and that's what uh, what's, what's great about doing this. Greg, you touched on, you know, some of the things that they were being taught in terms of maybe this intangible type stuff or everything that goes into being a quarterback. And you touched on at the beginning with Jaden just kind of freely admitting what about his makeup as a guy that you saw this week? Did he, was he a guy getting completely down? Did he, you know, how did he kind of take maybe that it wasn't his best performance that he's ever had? Just maybe intangibly, again, you, he's a, been a guy that you've known or, and have seen. You, you know, you could see him kind of talking to himself a lot. You know, it was funny before we got in the call, you know, me and, and Blair Angulo, Brandon Huffman, we have our own little group chat and we're talking about Jaden, you know, we're all big Jaden fans. And kind of say, you know, you could see him literally after every throw that was bad, he, you know, he'd kind of get down and, and little talk to himself and whether that was in words of encouragement to himself or whether it was like, come on, get, get, get your act together kind of thing. Um, but, you know, I, I, I love his makeup, man. I, I always say he's got that NorCal chip. And if you're not from California, you know, California might be two different states or Southern California and there's Northern California. They're radically different, right? And I live in Southern California and I will freely admit to Southern California, there's like a little more of a relaxed vibe. And NorCal, that they have a little bit more of a chip because they feel like they're getting overlooked by, for this, especially football wise. NorCal kids always kind of feel like they have a little bit of a chip because they're overlooked. The SoCal kids get a little more praise, they get a little more adulation. They're talked about a little bit more. So Jaden has that NorCal chip when he comes to any event. Man, he's super competitive, and that's why I think you know he was frustrated because he wanted to come out here. And he even said when we talked in our interview before the camp started, hey, he, he said I'm glad to be out here. I don't know what the exact words were, but it's basically he, uh, my interpretation was no politics, level playing field for everybody, meaning no one's above or, or below anybody. It's everyone's thrown on the same field, um, no preconceived idea. And I think he was upset because he was like, man, this was my chance to kind of come out and show that I belong with the best of the best. And if you ask Jaden, I mean, he truly believes that forget Arch or Malachi Nelson or Nico. I mean, he, he Jaden would say, I'm the number one quarterback in the country. He truly believes that. And I think it drives him, right? And he, I think that's what I love about him is just how competitive he is. And he's not a prima donna quarterback. You know, at different events, you'll see quarterbacks kind of like, you know, just the way they carry themselves, little, you know, silver spoon in their mouth type of deal. And Jaden's the opposite of that. You know, he doesn't really, I, I just, not the kind of guy, he probably doesn't even like to hang out with other quarterbacks because he's not built or wired like they are. Uh, so I, I think, you know, for him, kind of getting back to the original question, you know, I, I think he was disappointed. I, I could tell he was visibly frustrated when the camp was over. He looked like he was relieved that it was over. Um, I think he was disappointed he didn't put his best foot forward, but I think he still knows how good he is. And he said, hey, man, uh, you're still, you know, I appreciate all the stuff that we've been writing about him. You know, he goes, hey, man, when three years I'm in the green room, you guys are all invited. So, you know, I still think highly confident, believes in himself and, and just felt like, hey, you know, for those three days, it wasn't his best work out, but he's still, you know, a super talented kid. What, what did you see positively? You, you know, not again, you're already high on him. You like the makeup and, and things like that. But, you know, what were some, were there moments that, that you oh, yeah. saw that stood out to you that, okay, essentially this is why he was a top five guy or one of those top 11 guy. Why, um, what was he doing so well? And again, it, it certainly, it's a sliding scale with him um, in terms of expectations with what he did, but what were some things that, that went well for him? No, I mean, hit. Like I said, his, his best throws were among the best throws in the camp. I mean, he's got one of the best deep balls. He's one of the best deep ball in terms of accuracy, in terms of just pure arm strength. Uh, doesn't need a huge windup. Very good mechanically. Uh, his drops are, are very strong. He's one of those guys, when he goes to college, 
you want to tweak a lot of things with them, right? We saw some guys, I'm not going to name names, but some of these guys need a lot of work. Um, the releases are flat out just long and ugly. You're kind of wondering, dude, someone actually taught you, you know, to throw the ball that way. Um, their drops are sloppy. Uh, they're strictly pocket guys. They, when they have to roll out right, left, they labor badly. Uh, Jaden isn't that guy at all. I mean, he's a good athlete. I don't think he has enough credit for being an athlete. I think you'll see him run a lot more this year, um, but he can move. He's got really good pocket mobility. He's comfortable rolling right, left, comfortable throwing from different arm angles. You know, when he takes a drop, uh, just the way, you know, you call it ball placement, so, you know, where he holds the ball on his drop, the follow through, the release, it's all super pure. Like, again, you won't need to do much tweaking with him at all when he gets to college. It'll just be all the mental side, right? Like teaching him the offense and the scheme and, and progressions and, and, you know, how to change prote uh, protections and what to look for from that standpoint. But from, you know, his, his body, uh, you know, he needs to put on some weight, get bigger. Um, but just physically, he's, he can throw the football. He understands anticipation, timing, uh, understands change in speed. He doesn't always have to rip it 100 miles an hour. He's comfortable where he doesn't need to show off his arm. But when he does, he's got it. So uh, I think from a pure just throwing ability, we, we saw all that, I, at least I did. And, and that's why I'm still as high on him as I was before the camp. So coming into it, you know, you touched on, you know, just him as a quarterback, him player rating, you know, 24 seven, number five in quarterback in the class, composite ranking number seven, you know, the, whenever the next rankings come out, where do you kind of envision him? Do you see him possibly getting a bump? Is that about right? Just kind of your thoughts on that. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, honestly, for me, I, I would not drop him. Um, now, saying all that, I think Jackson Arnold might be one spot behind him. And, and if I'm just keeping it real, Jackson Arnold was pretty dang good. You know, his tools were off the charts. It was my first time seeing him, seeing him in person. And that you can't really – I don't want to make this a big Jackson Arnold show. But if Jackson were to leapfrog him, I, I probably wouldn't argue with that. Just because, I, you know, it, it wasn't just he had, he had a great camp. It was – you look at Jackson's – uh, body of work, being at Denton Geyer, being an elite quarterback with elite athletes, athleticism, and you saw the tools in person. Um, so if, if he drops from five to six, it would not shock me. Um, but I don't think his national rating should drop. That makes sense, right? Even if he gets bumped in the positional, I still think his, his overall national should be about the same. I, I still think he's good. And again, I, I know I'm an advocate for him and maybe because I've seen him a lot and I know Brandon Huffman has as well. Um, so my, my guess might drop one spot, but hopefully not too far in the national, if, if at all. Yeah. And nationally, number 29, which is higher than the composite ranking top 30 player in the country is certainly very impressive. Top 50, you know, any of those guys top are really impressive. That means you're good at football. Absolutely. It's especially with all the positions, you know, there's so yeah. many guys when you look at, you know, they're outside, even if they're outside the top 100 at their particular position, they're, they're one of the best. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I will say this to, to finish off the thought, you know, I, this might be the best year for quarterbacks in a long time. You know, I think last year's class, Jaden, Jaden, maybe one or two, you know, I, Kate club, Nick drew all over one and two. I'm not, I don't I brain fog. I don't remember the order. I think we had Cade one and I like Kate a lot, but in terms of tools, you know, this year's class, it's not just that people say that the big three, and they're meaning, you know, Arch Manning, Nico, Malachi Nelson. Now, Dante Moore is just as good as those guys are. And you know what? Jackson Arnold is just as good as those guys at the top of the board. And I always going to throw in Rashada. And even the guys, the depth. I mean, we saw, you know, one of the replacements, Kenny Jackson Smolik, who was a replacement for Nico. Uh, he was the 21st guy. He made the, the Elite 11. He made their final 11 as a replay. And he was really good. So, I mean, this quarterback group this year, one of the best I've seen in a long time. It was great. Great insight, Greg. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, time is valuable. I'll let you get going. Always good talking to you.